Welcome to UCY this glorious Sunday. We are so grateful for all of you for your continued virtual presence and for any newcomers here this morning because we would not be UCY without all of you. So my name is Phoebe Oler. I am the liturgical coordinator here at UCY. Um, I'm also in my second year at the Divinity School um, getting my Master of Divinity. This morning in worship, we look forward to our third Advent candle lighting liturgy, which will be led by the Sukmono family. And we look forward to our very own Pastor Jenny, who will preach us the good word. We are really excited for the UCY choir to team up with the Elm City Girls Choir. Thank you to our choir director, Megan Stoll, for coordinating. We will hear the joint anthem next Sunday, not this Sunday. FYI, Pastor Ian is on vacation this Sunday and next, in case you're looking for him. We hope and we pray that he is getting some much deserved rest. Please join us if you feel so inclined after the service for a 30 minute informal community gathering. We would love to see you there. Now let us quiet our hearts, release any distractions and turn to prayer. You are invited to unmute and pray with me the call to worship. Come, for God brings a garland instead of ashes. Come, for God brings the mantle of praise to all whose spirits are faint. Come, as all things are being made new. We may not always understand Guide us, O Prince of Peace. Light our heaven way. Amen. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to thee, O Israel. O come, O wisdom from on high, embracing all things far and high, in strength and beauty come and stay, teach us your will and guide our way, rejoice. Restore the broken, make us new. 
on Southeast Asia Studies, Yale University since 2001. And I've been worshiping with the uh, Yale University Church since uh, our two daughters in high school and now one of them moved to another college. And uh, University Church is always their, uh, their best place to uh, worship. Okay. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Sukmono. I'm Yale University family and I'm joined University Church for quite a while. Good morning, everyone. I'm Gabby, and I am a junior at Connecticut College. It's good to see you all. My name is Nikita. I am currently a grad student at Cornell, but I've called UCY home for a long time. Um, and this girl in the middle is our cat friend, Iggy, <laughs> joining us this morning. Um, so the season of Advent on the church calendar is a season of waiting and preparation for Christmas. Um, in the 1800s, Lutherans began the tradition of lighting four candles on a wreath, one for each of the four Sundays, counting down to Christmas. Our theme for the Advent candle lighting this year is waiting on the way, and this week's theme is joy. You're all welcome to join us at home by lighting a candle of your own or joining us in praying over the candles we light in our home here, whether it's in New Haven or elsewhere. At the end of the spoken liturgy, before we light the candles, you are welcome to unmute and join us in inviting Emmanuel, God with us, to come among us. The prayer will be in the chat. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes and their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is tradition, because it lifts our heart, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled and when he said, God will give you a garland instead of ashes the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a pain spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. We light this candle as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of the season, not just the thing that glitter and flash, but the deeper things the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. We light this candle of joy because company is coming. So together, let us say, O oh, come, O oh, come, 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 and bring, bring your goodness. Thank you. 
Good morning, everyone. I'm Heather Reynolds, part of the liturgical ministry group at UCY. I'll be reading from the prophet Isaiah chapter 61. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the net captives and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of the faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offsprings among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be, Thanks to, be to God. Amen. Good morning, UCY friends. My name is Sydney Mukasa and I am a first year student mm -hmm. at Yale's Institute of Sacred Music and a proud member of the Battelle Chapel Choir. I am delighted and humbled to share the gospel with you all gathered this morning. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They had asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the good news of the gospel. Please join me in prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on this place. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Throughout Advent, oh, my moving desk just moved. All right. <laughs> Throughout Advent, we are continually oriented towards expectancy. Like a parent who is waiting to meet their child in Advent, we allow ourselves to be stuck 
in a posture of waiting, a place of longing, a place of dreaming and imagining, a place of considering what could be amidst all that is not. And as the days have passed, I can't help but ask, but what are we waiting for? Our text from Isaiah and the Gospel of John help us answer this question, what are we waiting for? And both come to peoples who have been stuck in postures of longing for quite some time. Isaiah is speaking here in Isaiah 61. It speaks to the remnant of Jews who made it through a long Babylonian exile and were returning to their homeland, Jerusalem, only to discover after many decades that their beloved temple, the house of the Lord, had indeed been destroyed 70 years previous. And John is speaking to a people much like us who have been waiting for the Messiah, a people who are weighed down with individual and communal burdens, longing for the promised peace and joy of the Lord to be made manifest in its fullness. But who is this Messiah that we are longing for? Who really is Christ? And what are we to be sure of about God in this season when we're looking ahead? Now, of course, these questions can't be answered in just one scripture. I don't recommend that we each cherry pick our way through the Holy Scriptures. But today's reading from the prophet Isaiah is a central text in our journey as God's children. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, Isaiah proclaimed because the Lord has anointed me. He has brought me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. favor. Does this text sound familiar to any of you? It might, because these are the words that Jesus preached in his very first sermon as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. Christ was in his home synagogue and he stood up reading from the scroll and preached these same words and then said, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. As if sowing the words into his very being, Christ made his call and God's desire for his ministry clear. To bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to pro proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, the Jubilee year, when all debt is erased, when all sins are forgiven, and when all wrongs are made right. In some ways, I think we could just stop the sermon here because the thesis is quite clear. God's vision, God's hope, God's desire for God's children begins and ends in these words in good news for the poor and marginalized, in bringing the brokenhearted near, in binding them and us and our hearts together, bringing healing and peace, in proclaiming liberty for all who are held captive and releasing all who are imprisoned. This is it, God's dream and God's desire for God's people. Given language, we can understand in one brief stanza. But of course, the more I have prayed over these simple words, the less simple they have seemed. What would our world look like if our moral axes truly spun around these concepts? What would it look like? If the poor and the oppressed were honored, their worth and self being self-evident and clear in all situations? What would our world look like if we didn't try to ignore or push away all that is broken, all that weighs heavy on our hearts, but instead if we held it, like a seamstress who was holding a beloved sweater in need of repair, gently holding all that has been torn and frayed and repairing it, bringing it together one loving stitch at a time. And what might our world look like if we release the idea that one person or community deserves imprisonment or captivity, maybe the most radical idea of all of those said here? What would our world look like if we always chose equity and liberation for all? What might our world look like if we lived into Isaiah's prophecy and Christ's sermon? 
The more we delve into these desires, the more we realize just how much there is still left to do for the world to be set right. And these realizations, if we let them, at least for me, and maybe for you too, can become overwhelming or even paralyzing. It's difficult to dwell in the enormity of all that needs to be made new and all that needs to change for God's vision to be made manifest. But Isaiah models holding together all that is not as it should be alongside all that God desires can be. For as Isaiah shows us, it's only when we look at what is not as it should be, we can discover the way forward. As Isaiah says, and the first time I read it, I only heard all of the joy. And then I was at Bible study with some colleagues and they were all talking about grief. And I said, wait a minute, I only heard joy in this text. And then I went back and looked and I invite you wherever your axis was this morning to read it again, holding both together. Isaiah holds grief and joy together and shows how they are connected. For it is in our mourning that comfort will come, Isaiah says. It is when we are faint in spirit, a mantle of praise shall be placed around us. It is from our ruins, ancient and new, that new life shall be raised up so that true repair can take root. Isaiah doesn't speak of joy or new life that comes because we ignored all that is hard. No, the prophet speaks of life that will come in the midst of all that is not as it should be. So how do we do it? How do we keep the faith when it's so easy to just become numb, disillusioned, or paralyzed by all that needs to change in our world and in our relationships? One way forward that I hear in our Psalm for the day, which we didn't have the chance to read, but is really good, Psalm 126, is dreaming. For as Psalm 126 states, when the Lord restores Zion's futures, we should be dreamers. Then will our mouth fill with laughter and our tongue with glad song. Then will they say in the name great things has the Lord done with these great things has the Lord done with us we should be like dreamers the psalmist says what does it look like to dream as a way of living into our faith in these strange times a sanctified art a ministry that integrates creativity and faith has an art has a video and artwork about our readings for today that I think is gonna help us answer this question and I'm gonna show it in just a minute. The video binds together holding all that is not as it should be with daring to dream amidst the ruins as an act of faith, dreaming as living into our faith. As I share the video, I invite each of us to consider what it is that God might be willing you to dare to dream this Advent season. Just one moment while I pull it up. There's so much sorrow here, so much shame and hurt and fear. And this grief feels like the ache is never ending. The night is long, can't find sleep. It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change everything
It's time to dream fierce dreams Like Mary did Brave dreams Like Joseph did New dreams Like Jesus did Cause those who dream change everything Those who dream change everything hmm. So what is it, beloved church, that we are dreaming about? What are we waiting for? What has God foretold of what is to come? And who exactly is this Christ child? What dreams does he invite us to dream and then help him to build and to make real? Our readings for today make clear God's desire for creation, liberation, justice, an ending of captivity and oppression in all its forms, and that all that is broken might be bound together and made new. This Advent, when we can feel so stuck, stuck in our homes, stuck in pandemic patterns, stuck even in history as collective seems seem to repeat, as collective sins seem to repeat themselves. This Advent, let us embrace dreaming as a radical act of faith. Let us be willing to be surprised by what God intends. Let us be willing to fail because dreams are just that, possibilities. And let us remember that it is not on us alone to see the pathways forward. But when we hold fast and trust that God is a God who, that God is who God claims to be. When we trust that Christ is all that he has promised let us trust that the spirit will accompany us, adorning us with the oil of gladness, comforting us when we mourn, meeting us when our spirits are faint, and tending to us like mighty oaks, as Isaiah said, plantings of the Lord, so that we might blossom and spring forth in ways we have yet to fully see, if only at first in our dreams. Amen. Bucket Thank you. 
Now let us turn our hearts to prayer. We invite you to stay muted, but to say aloud the responses along with Natalie. Jenny will post these in the chat. God in heaven, you watch over us and you love us. We are valuable in your eyes. So we come to you with our requests and we trust in your help. People are living with injustice and exploitation. Lord, we pray for justice that allows people to live and work with dignity. People are feeling alone and abandoned. Lord, we pray for love that accepts people unconditionally. People are anxiously awaiting results, good news and certainty about the future. Lord, we pray for calm in the storm, for peace in the chaos and remembrance that joy is promised. People are suffering from painful disruptions to their lives. Lord, we pray for comfort that rises people up and gives hope. People feel marginalized and labeled. Lord, we pray for courage that breaks down the walls between people and creates community. People are suffering under war, terror, and violence. Lord, we pray for freedom that brings reconciliation to hostile nations and ethnic groups, to religions and ideologies. People are making decisions constantly. Lord, we pray for wisdom to look to you for answers to our questions. We bring before you now all those things that lie close to our own hearts in the prayer that unites us all. I now invite us to say the Lord's Prayer together unmuted in whatever language or translation is closest to your heart. 
Our Father in heaven, Amen. Now let us sing together our final hymn called as partners in Christ's service. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us in worship this morning. Thank you, Jenny, for a beautiful message and the art that went along with it. Sukmono family for your candle lighting um, across borders. That's the beauty of Zoom. Phoebe for those prayers, um, musicians for bringing us a little bit of Christmas joy to our service and for everybody who is here with us whether you've been with us every Sunday or this is your first Sunday with us. If this is your first Sunday, we invite you to fill out the new visitors form um, that is posted in the chat. Fill that out so we can get to know you and you can receive a free shirt in the mail. I also invite all of us to stay on after the prelude to join in a community gathering. This will be a more informal time for us to chat and get to know each other and hear about how we're doing this week. You may have also noticed that Pastor Ian is away this week to get some well-deserved rest, and we are so glad that he can take that time. Um, but he will be back in the coming weeks. 
And coming up in worship this week, next week will be our fourth Sunday servant service in Advent. So I invite you to join and you can hear the candle lighting liturgy that we did this Sunday, again, next Sunday. Um, and later that week will be UCY's first Christmas Eve service, which we're very excited about. Um, Christmas Eve looks a little different for most of us this year. And so we're taking this as a chance to make a service that will be fun and intimate and meaningful all at the same time. So the service will be at 5 p.m. on Christmas Eve, 5 p.m. Eastern time, and all are welcome to join. And if you feel led to help with the service with one of our readings, um, that reading can be a silly reading or a more classic reading, please reach out to Phoebe or Pastor Jenny. Then following Christmas, we will not be having church on Sunday, December 27th or Sunday, January 3rd. So these days off, we'll give our musicians, our tech team, our leadership team, everybody a break from planning to get some rest. And then we will return back to regular services on January 10th. So feel free to email Pastor Jenny if you have any questions about this or if you would like some suggestions of other services that would be fun to visit in these Sundays off. Um, another thing coming up in January, I will be leading a book study that I'm really excited about on a book. I just noticed I grabbed my book, but it's not a very interesting cover. I promise the book is much more interesting than this one looks. Um, it's called The Creative Encounter by Howard Thurman. So Howard Thurman is a historical figure I've been fascinated with this year. He is most well known for his influence on the civil rights movement, bringing nonviolence um, to civil rights leaders in the 50s and 60s, as well as his influence on MLK. But he's also a great spiritual leader, grew a lot of his um, spiritual inspiration from nature, and I found has just been a wonderful figure to learn about and everything that's been going on in 2020. So Phoebe will be posting a link to sign up for that book study in the chat. Um, I invite you to join and try this out and email me with any questions that you may have. Lastly, our offering this week will be going to the Connecticut Food Bank. Phoebe will also be posting a link to donate here in the chat. So during this Advent season, all of our UCY offerings have been going to feed our hungry neighbors here in Connecticut via the Connecticut Food Bank, which supplies food, pantries, and soup kitchens across the state. Um, we know that food insecurity has been on the rise, especially as unemployment and other federal benefits are being canceled. So we would like to use our gifts to help our hungry neighbors. And now, as we move into our benediction, let us rejoice in the God who sent our Savior into the world who, and gathered us in one spirit this morning to dream together of a world of love. May we go out in the ways God intends for us, remembering that we are accompanied by the God who hears our cries in the wilderness, renews us in the waters, and promises goodness in what is to come. And now, like we do each Sunday, I invite you to unmute yourselves and join me in responding to our benediction from the prophet Micah. With what shall I come before the Lord? And bow and myself, myself, and myself and bow down 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 high. High. God, on high. God has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what and what is the required of you? but to do justice to do, to justice. do justice. justice and to love kindness to love, to love kindness. kindness and to walk humbly with your god to, to walk, walk humbly, humbly with, your with god. our god amen. 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 amen amen let us go in peace with the peace of god who loves us came to save us and dreams with us amen, amen.
Yay, Rebecca. <laughs> Always fun to actually get to see her fingers at work on the keys. Welcome everyone to our community gathering. Let's quick also thank the Sukmono family for your wonderful Advent candle lighting. You're welcome. It's such a joy to see all four of you together. It's always a holiday treat. Um, I'm glad we can make it happen this year. Yeah. So um, as we always do, oh, I'm gonna stop the recording. See, I'm, I miss Ian for so many reasons.